Honor, amen, and Dr. Brenda, amen. Listen, be here next week, amen, for your certification, amen. amen. And we thank God for that, amen. 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 Listen, your, I, the Bible tells us we shall be, our, our, our children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of our children. Amen. Now, when you when you study that, he's not just referring to little children. He's talking about the children of God. Amen. How many children of God do I have in the building tonight? Amen. He said, we shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be our peace. Amen. So it's important for the ministry to be undergirded, amen, and established in the word of God. Amen. 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 And so we're going to continue further here and get into the word of the Lord. Amen. If you could turn with me to Revelation chapter 10, uh, verse 1. Amen. And we're going to begin our reading uh, of the word of God here. Amen. If you have a new King James Bible uh, you know, I would encourage you to uh, utilize that for the initial reading of the Word of God. Amen. If you have your smartphone, uh, you can use your smartphone as well. Uh, Revelation 10 uh, in the New King James Version. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to start the reading of the Word of God right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, and so I want to give you two points, okay, and I want you to write these points down, okay? Uh, the first point being, how many, how many know that the angels of the Lord are in camp round about us Amen. to deliver us? Yeah. Amen, because we fear the Lord. Amen. Amen. So the point being is we have angelic assistance. Amen? Amen. How many believe that? Somebody say, I have angelic assistance. Okay, why is that important? Because you and I have to understand that God has caused us to live in the supernatural. Therefore, we have supernatural help. Amen. Amen. Okay, and one of the things you find even throughout scripture is that when Jesus was tempted by the enemy, the Bible tells us that the angels came to minister on his behalf. Amen. Amen. Okay, and so we know that, listen, if Jesus had assistance from the angels of the Lord. You and I, too, in Christ Jesus, have assistance from the angels of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Okay, and if you're taking notes, please do. Please take notes. Write this scripture down, Hebrews 1, 14. We're not going there, just write it down. Hebrews 1, 14. The scripture simply says, Are they not all ministering spirits that have been sent forth to minister for the heirs of salvation. How many are heirs of salvation tonight? Okay, if you are an heir of salvation, which means you have inherited salvation, which comes by way of Jesus Christ, if that is the case and that applies to you, then you have angelic assistance. Amen. Okay, according to the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Okay, now the second point that I'm making to you tonight as we prepare to read the word of God, the second thing I want you to understand tonight is that when the angel declares in what we're about to read, uh, what you'll find is that there is a mystery that has been finished. And that mystery, and I'm just going to give you a sneak peek into it, and we've read it for the last couple of weeks, is that Christ is on the inside of us. Amen. Okay, and we have to have this as a spiritual truth. Okay, if we're going to uh, go further into the supernatural, you have to understand that Christ is now on the inside of you. Okay, we know that the man, Jesus Christ, is seated on the right hand of the Father. Am I right about it? Yeah. Okay, and he has sent you and I his anointing. Amen. Amen. Okay, and so when you see the word Christ, if you're taking notes, that word Christ has to do with the man, Jesus Christ, and also his anointing. Amen. Are you with Amen. me here? Yeah. Okay, and so what we have to understand is now that Jesus Christ has died, been crucified, buried, rose from the dead, been seen of men, has ascended into the heavens, and is seated on the right hand of the Father, he has now sent you and I his anointing. Amen. Okay, and so the point being that Christ is on the inside of us. Somebody say, Christ in me. Christ in me. The hope of glory. The hope of glory. Okay, so you have to have these two things. The angel of the Lord are working on your behalf, and Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing is on the inside of you. Yes. Amen. 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 Revelation 10.1 in the New King James Version. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, 
and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now, when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write. This is what, this is what uh, John the Revelator said. I was about to write something. The Bible says, but I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered and do not write them. So we are not, uh, we don't know what it is that those thunderous voices were declaring because the Bible says that God told John not to write those things. Are you with me here? Amen. Verse 5, the angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer. Amen. I want you to say yeah. that with me. Yeah. Say that there shall be delay there shall be no, no longer. Delay. Say it again. That there should be delay no longer. One more time. That there shall be delay no longer. I want you to say that to yourself. There should be delay no longer. In my life. In the name of Jesus. Okay? And one of the things we declare is that that word, that term that there should be delay no longer has to do with when God sets you for an appointed opportunity he says there won't be an end to that blessing Amen. when God opens up the door of opportunity to you there should be delay no longer meaning the enemy can't even stop what God is doing in your life because it is a prophetic time and prophetic season in your life why watch this verse 7 but in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel okay when he is about to sound the mystery of God would be finished as he declared to his servants, the prophets. Somebody say amen to this. Amen. Okay, so the seventh angel, he is declaring there shall be delay no longer. And the Bible is saying that when the seventh angel declares this, it's because the mystery of God would be finished. So we have to know what the mystery of God is. Am I right about it here? So very quickly, go to Colossians 1.27. So you have to understand you have angelic assistance. And what we've declared is that this has already occurred. Okay, and I can't go back into it, but by the spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom, we understand that when the angel declares this, okay, it has already occurred before you and I have come into this. Watch this, my God. Thank you, Lord. You got to have this. No, no, no. I'm serious. You have to have this. Why? Because uh, some of the things we understand, according to the book of Revelation, the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, come on, beginning and the ending, amen, said the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, God Almighty, okay? And so we understand that, listen, sometimes you're going to be reading the book of Revelation, it's going to be about who is. You're going to also be reading the book of Revelation. You're going to, it's going to be talking about who was. Yeah. And it's also going to be talking about who is to come. Yeah, okay, right. so Amen. you have to understand the book of Revelation by the spirit of Revelation. Okay, and the spirit of the wisdom of God. Because you may be reading a portion of scripture and it'll be about what's to come. Uh -huh. But then you might be reading about a portion of scripture in Revelation about who is. But you have to be able to discern it by the spirit of the most high God. Are you with me here? Amen. Why am I telling you that? I'm telling you that because the sounding of the seventh angel, I'm declaring to you, has already occurred. That's correct. It says the mystery of God would be finished. Uh -huh. So what is the mystery of God? Colossians 127. Are you with me? Amen. Okay. God. Don't miss it. Because I need you to understand Amen. where you're at in the word of God. Yes, sir. I need you to understand, listen, when you 
See, what we have to understand as children of God is, listen, once you come into this understanding, there is nothing that devil can do to stop your purpose. Amen. Are, are you listening to me? Now, now what? Listen, now that you've come into this truth, okay, now that you've come into this truth and to the word of God, there is nothing the enemy can do to stop where you are headed in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, I don't care what he show you. What God has for your life will surely come to pass. Amen. Yeah. Are you with me here? Yeah. There shall be delay no longer. Now, there's a couple prophetic words that we've declared. We've declared that, listen, God is exceeding our expectation. Yeah. Okay, that's a prophetic word that you can begin to declare in your home, and I will show it to you in your Bibles shortly. God is exceeding our expectation. What else are we declaring in this house? We're declaring that I'm living on the edge of breakthrough. Yes. Okay, meaning that the very next move I make in Christ Jesus is going to take me to a blessed place. Somebody say amen to this. Amen. Now pay attention to this. Colossians 1.27. Amen. To whom God would make known what is, matter of fact, let's go up. I got to read all of it just so you have a clear understanding. This is Paul declaring prophetically to uh, the church of Colossae. He says, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery, everybody say the mystery. The mystery. Okay, even the mystery which has been hidden or hid from ages. And from generations, I, I'm showing this to you because this has been hid <laughs> from certain amen, people amen. that you thought, my God, we're walking in power in the word of God. Listen, some folks didn't have it come into this revelation, but you and I are coming into something. I, I need you to really pay attention to this. The Bible says it's been hid from ages and from generations. What? This mystery. Are you paying attention here? But now, everybody say, but now. But now it's made manifest to his saints. How many are saints of God? Okay, so he's speaking to you. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Which is what? Christ, come on, in you, what? The hope of glory. I need you to have this Settled in your heart. Christ is in you. Amen. It has to be settled. It can't be up for debate. You can't be saved today and a sinner tomorrow. <laughs> if you receive Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Christ is in you. Are you listening to me? The anointed one and his anointing is in you. He says the hope of glory. Okay, and we've defined this several times. But again, just for those of you that have never heard this before, the word hope it has to do with the reasonable expectation. How many know that God says, listen, in Christ, you can have a reasonable expectation right. Amen. of Amen. what the glory of God being revealed in your life. Right. You say, well, pastor, what's glory? Glory is the manifested goodness of God. Hey, Amen. Amen. See, I need you to have this tonight. Glory is the manifested goodness of God. Everybody say manifested. manifested. What's manifested mean? It means it's materialized. Amen. It, it means it's no longer in the realm of the spirit, but it has produced itself in your life. Amen. What does that mean? That means that the things that you are expecting God to do, they are no longer out in your prayer life, but they are actually in your life. Oh, I need you to pay attention. Now that you're in Christ and there shall be delay no longer, the things that you are doing that God has purposed for your life, listen, it comes with the expectation that God's going to do what he said he would do for you because Christ in you is the hope of his glory. Are you all paying attention here? Okay, somebody say, I have a reasonable expectation. I have a reasonable expectation. Of the materialized goodness of God. Say, I have a reasonable expectation of the tangible goodness of God. How many like things that are tangible? Say, when it's tangible, it's no more out in the spirit realm. You you can touch it. Amen. You've got those car keys. You've got the keys to that new house. In our home, uh, there was a prophet that we saw one day 
And we were sitting there worshiping God, amen, in the service. And the prophet came off of the pulpit and he looked at the prophet and said, I, amen, and said, I see three keys. <laughs> he looked at us and said, I see, for whatever reason, I see three keys. Now, what he didn't know was that here shortly thereafter, uh, we would come to this building and receive three keys. Oh, you're not listening to me. <laughs> this, oh, my God. See, when you're obedient to the word of God, he will manifest his plan in your life. Are you listening to me? Somebody say Christ in me. Christ in me. The hope of glory. Okay, can I go further? Yeah. Okay, so one of the things the Lord said to me is, see, we this, this what God has given us is the blueprint. Okay, what's a blueprint? A blueprint is a detailed plan of something to be done. Okay, he's given us his word. Okay, and in his word is his plan for our lives. This is why if you're taking notes, I want you to write the scripture down, Jeremiah 29, where he's at, and 11, where he says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. We have to understand that God has a specific type of thought for us. Now, are you with me here? He, he, he's... <laughs> See, we do it in the Psalm 115 Covenant Partnership where we do it on Sundays that the Bible tells us in Psalm 115 that God is, has been mindful of us. Amen. How many know God is mindful Amen. of you? Yeah. How many really believe that? Yeah. He, he's mindful of you yeah. to bless you. Yeah. How many know God wants to bless you? Yeah. How many know that that's not a debate? Yeah. How, many not, no, how many know that no matter what anybody else says, it's not up for debate? That God is actually keeping his mind on you to be a blessing to you. Amen. So Jeremiah prophesies. He says, I know the thoughts, says the Lord. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace. How many receive peace tonight? How many really receive God's peace on tonight? Say this with me. Say nothing missing. Say nothing broken. Say in my life. Say in the name of Jesus. Say I receive the peace of God. Say nothing missing. Nothing Say missing. nothing broken. Nothing broken. In, my in my life. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. But that's what he says in Jeremiah 29 11. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace, not of evil. Not of evil. Not of evil. That's right. To bring us into an expected end. Amen? Amen. Now, one of the things we have to understand is this word has to be voice activated. That's correct. Amen. Okay? By faith. So if you're taking notes, I want you to write that down. And many of you may have that understanding already, but we have to understand that, listen, in order for this word yeah. to become a reality in your life, you have to decree it by faith. Hey, hey, hey. Amen, amen. Okay? If you are going to walk in the supernatural, okay, you have to be one who decrees, amen. declares, yes. proclaims, yes. right? pronounces yeah. God's word. Are you with me here? Amen. Okay, now I have to confirm it because I don't want to assume that anybody knows this. So very quickly turn to Psalm 107. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I'm sorry, Psalm 103. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Say the word is voice activated. The word is voice activated. Say it again. Say the word is voice activated. The word is voice activated. Okay. It's, you, you have to speak it aloud. Yep. Amen. Yes. The Bible tells us out of the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth speaks. Okay, so it's important for us to have this principle. Listen, you have to have this principle. You have to speak the word of God. Amen. Okay? So the point being, one of the, the major point that we've been making over the last two weeks is we have to work the word. Amen. Okay? Amen. Everybody say that with me. Say work the word. Work the word. Okay, you have to work the word. Yes. Okay, the same way folks work a job. Wow. Okay, the same way you work whatever it is you do in life. Okay, you also have to be one who works.
works the word of God. Amen. Okay? Amen. Listen, if you're going to allow Christ in you to be the hope of your glory, Amen. you've got to give him something to work with. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. If you're going to walk in supernatural power, you have to give the anointing something to work with. Yes, sir. Amen. Okay? So the principle being we have to work the word. Yes. Amen? Amen. Psalm 103 verse 20. Bless the Lord. Ye his angels that do what? Excel in strength that do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. Okay? And so it's a very simple principle. And again, many of us know this, okay? But the word of God has to be voice activated for the angels to gain strength and hearken to the voice of his word. Amen. I need you to understand this here. When you speak, Speak the word of God. The angels of the Lord have been commanded to move according to what you're saying. Amen. Amen. I need you to make sure this is clear. Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. I need it to be crystal clear. Everybody say crystal clear. This has to be crystal clear. See, the Lord said, listen, this has to be. Listen, if we are going to walk in power, we have to receive this as part of our blueprint of understanding. Okay. We're not. Uh. Maybe some of us are baby Christians, okay? But some of us are not baby Christians. Right, right. Some of us been hearing this word for a long time. Yeah. Some, some of us, it's time for us to actually put application to this word, Amen. okay? It, it may be, listen, for some of us, it's time to begin to apply the things that we understand, amen? amen. And so one of the things the, word, the Lord said to me is we've got to work the word. So when you see that, the Bible tells us, bless the Lord, he is angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. It means that we have to speak God's word audibly. Amen. And when we do that, the angels in the realm of the spirit begin to fight and move on our behalf. Somebody amen. say amen to this. Amen. Amen. Now, why is this important? Again, the next point I want to make to you is the anointing works with the word. And the word works with the anointing. Amen. Amen. Okay. And if you're taking notes, I want you to have this tonight. Listen, this is going to change your life. Amen. Okay. Listen, the anointing works with the word. Yes, and the word works with the anointing. Yes. Amen. Okay. Amen. Go very quickly to Mark chapter 16. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I'm telling you, this is a blueprint, somebody. Yes, it is. Okay, what, and what, what major point am I getting across as far as a blueprint? You have to work the word. Okay, you have to speak it audibly. Okay? Somebody say, against all odds. Against all odds. Okay, because, you know, sometimes we're around people that don't want to hear the word. Okay, sometimes we're around people that, you know, want to shun the word. Okay, or, you know, or are... Or, or, or are offended by the word. Amen. Okay? So so you can't be moved by that. Okay? You have to work the word of the Lord. Why? Because you're a supernatural being. Amen? Amen. Watch this. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach what? The gospel. And preach what? The gospel. To where? Every creature. Okay. Now, again, that word preach is not you getting behind a pulpit and preaching. That's right. <laughs> okay. When he said this, the disciples didn't have a pulpit. That's correct. Are you with me here? Yep. So the preaching here has to do with proclaiming. Right. Okay. They call this the Great Commission. Amen. Okay. This is the last time Jesus instructs the disciples before he uh, ascends into the heavens. So the Bible says, he said to them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be condemned. Amen. And these signs, everybody say these signs. signs. Say it again, say these signs. signs. Say it one more time, say these signs. These signs. 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 Okay, the Greek word is semeon. Okay, that has to do with what God authenticates. Okay, there are some things that men on their own can do. 
There are some wonderful things that on their own men have done great things. But there are certain things that only God can do. That's right. Okay. That's right. There are only there are certain things that only God can bring you through. That's right. Okay. I'm talking about miracles. Okay. I'm talking about evidences that God is alive and well and active in your life. Amen. Okay. Amen. There are some yeah. situ some situations that God has brought us from that you know that it wasn't your mother. Right. It wasn't your father. Yeah. It wasn't those yeah. close to you that brought you out. It was nothing but the hand of God. Amen. That's okay, enough. that has brought you this far. So these are signs. God says these signs shall follow them that believe. Right. Okay, you've got to get comfortable with miracles happening in your life. Yeah. Amen. I need you to Amen. listen to me tonight. See, when you work the word, it shouldn't be uncommon for miracles to occur. Yeah, that's right. Are you listening yeah. to me? Okay, he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Right. Now, that means you don't have to chase a miracle. Amen. Oh, I need y'all to stay with me tonight. Are you staying with me? You don't have to chase a miracle. Why? Because your Bible just told you that miracles shall follow you. Amen, amen, amen. Is that what your Bible says? The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. Oh, yes. Okay, right, now don't, right. don't get this thing confused. In the Hebrew, the word follow there has to do with chasing you down. Oh, wow. Don't leave me here. You haven't left me yet, have you? I haven't even got to where I want to go yet. Listen, the word follow has to do with chasing you down. Miracles are supposed to chase you down. Yes, amen, amen, yeah, amen. This is what your Bible says. It says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Yes. How many believe in Christ Jesus? Yes. The, the signs that he's in your life ought to be following you. Are you with me here? Yes. You should always have a testimony of what Christ is doing in your life. Why? Because you have Christ in you. Amen. Amen. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak. Come on, what? With new tongues, okay? If you're a believer, you should speak with new tongues. Isn't that what your Bible just told you? He says, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any daily thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. Now, he's talking about believers. He's not talking about pastors and bishops and prophets and all, all the fivefold ministry, and they can do it. Amen. This is the gifting of the Holy Ghost. But I want you to understand, he's talking to believers. Amen. Are you a believer? Yes. Okay, yes. it says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Okay? Amen. Verse 19. So then after the Lord had spoke to them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Verse 20 is where I wanted to go. And they went forth and preached everywhere. Somebody say they preached everywhere. Now don't listen, hear me. They took this word and went everywhere speaking. Amen. I need you to pay attention. Yes, yes. If you're going to see miracles happen in your life, you can't be one of these, you know, quiet Christians that only want to speak the word in your house. Amen. Only want to speak the word when you're by yourself. You only want to speak the word when nobody can hear you. Uh -uh. Your Bible just said they went, when they received this word, they went forth and preached everywhere. They preached where people wanted to hear it. They preached where they didn't want to hear it. They preached where they didn't care to hear it. My God, you're not going to talk to me. Your Bible says they went forth and preached everywhere. Amen, amen. Did you get that? So it means when they got this word, they didn't keep quiet. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. When you get this word, you can't be quiet. That's right. That's right. When you get this word, other people ought to know you saved. When you get this word, people ought to want you to pray for them. Are you listening to me? True. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Amen. I told a brother today. He came to me and said, I've had a migraine since, since 2 a.m. 2 a.m. I said, in the name of Jesus. Mm, you didn't hear me. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm at the secular job there. And, and someone asked me, told me they had a headache since 2 a.m. And I knew he was he asked, telling me for a certain reason. So in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I commanded migraine. 
to return to the pit yeah. from which it came. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Okay, so you, you have to be willing to preach this word everywhere. Right? right? The Lord working with and confirming what? The word. Amen. Don't miss this. I want you to see this here. Mark 16 and 20. Uh -huh. They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord uh -huh. working in the King James Bible. It says working with them. Uh -huh. Okay. But if you have a King James Bible, that word them is italicized. Uh -huh. Meaning it wasn't there in the original language when it was originally written. Are you with me here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes you can take the italicized word out and it adds power to the word of God. Amen. And then other times it's there and it gives uh, a clarity to the sentence structure. Are you here? Right. Yes. So let's read it without the italicized word. Okay. okay don't miss this. Okay. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with and confirming the word with what? Signs following. I don't want you to miss this. Your Bible just told you they went everywhere preaching and proclaiming and declaring the word of God. Yeah. And the Bible says the Lord, uh -huh. the anointing, yeah. Yeah. worked with and confirmed the word. Amen. Don't miss this. That's right. That's right. The reason why you're speaking this is not so people see you. Right. Right. You're speaking this so that when you decree it, people see the anointing. Yeah. Okay. He's going to work with uh -huh. and confirm the word. What word? The word of the kingdom. The word of God. The gospel of the kingdom. Are you all with me on this? I don't want you to miss this. This is very important to, to you producing miracles in your life. Okay? So I'm trying to make this as clear as I can. Is, it, is everybody tracking me on this? Okay, so they went everywhere preaching. Are you with me there? And the Lord working with and confirming the word. With signs following. So when they spoke the word, miracles came after it. I need you to pay attention here. After they decree whatever God told them to say, the Bible is teaching us that there were miracles that came forth after his word was released. Are you listening to this? So when you and I speak the word, Miracle signs and wonders are to happen after that. Yes. Are you listening to me? Oh, that should have shook the room right there. That, that, that right there did something on the inside of me. When I, when I understood that, listen, because Christ is in me, the hope of glory, when I decree his word, miracles break forth in my life. That's why I can declare there shall be delay no longer because as I decree God's word and give voice yes. to his word, yes. angels are on assignment, yes. miracle signs and wonders come forth, and God gets all the glory Amen. out Amen. of my life. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, that's for me. That's for me. Are y'all getting this? Yes. yes. The anointing confirms the word. Mm -hmm. yes. The anointing works with the word. Yes. With signs following. Yes. Can I go a little further? Yes. Okay. Now, make sure you understand this. God's word does not come to pass because God said so. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. you say that again. See? Yeah, I know. It's amazing, huh? <laughs> See, we think, oh, well, I got a Bible. No, that don't just guarantee you what it is you're looking for. That's correct. Amen. Okay. That's right. See, God's word does not come to pass just because God said so. God's word comes to pass because you say on earth what God has already said in heaven. Amen. No, 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 no. See, you took that real normal. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't you sit up here and hear and act like, oh, that's cool, Pastor. No, that's not cool. That's revelation. No, no, no. That's not normal. That's super normal. Okay? You've got to understand something here. God's word does not come to pass just because he said so. That's right. God's word comes to pass because you say on earth what God has already said in heaven. Amen. You've got to have this. This is not, listen, my God, you've got to get this in your spirit. 
See, I'm taking you somewhere because you've got to be one who works the word. Are you with me here? Amen. So the Holy Amen. Spirit gave me a Greek word, and many of you have heard this before because I know I've got some Bible scholars in the house. Okay, but there is a Greek word, and it's and it's called homologio. Okay, or homologio. Okay, or the word homo meaning the same as or logio, which has to do with word or speech. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to take our time right here for a second. I don't want you to miss this. Amen. Okay? Amen. Everybody say homologeo. Homologeo. Or say homologio. Homologio. It's a Greek word, okay? And it means to say the same thing as. Okay. Don't you miss this. Don't, don't, don't sit in here and act, don't, don't act like you, you know, hey, I got it all together. I got that. Uh-uh. We have to, listen, we have to apply this. Okay? Homologio. To say the same thing as. Okay, or if you're taking notes, to come to the same conclusion as. Amen. Oh my God, I don't want right. you to miss this. It means to fully agree. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> In other words, it has to do with you fully agreeing with the word of God for your life. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay, get your life. Amen. You will begin to be refreshed. I need you to pay attention to this. It's good. Amen. His ways and his thoughts are to provide provision for you. Yes. Amen. His ways and his thoughts are to give bread to the eater and seed to the sower. Right. Amen. That's his ways and his thoughts. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And he says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. Hey. I don't want you to miss this. So the same way he's thinking about providing for you, if you hear his word, the same thing will happen. Amen. This is important for you to get. I don't want you to miss this right here. Somebody say, I'm still with you, Pastor. I'm still with you, Pastor. So he's saying here, when my word comes down, I'm giving you my thoughts. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow. When, when my word comes down. So he's saying, so shall my word be. So he's saying that, listen, just like the snow and the rain comes down from heaven. Mm -hmm. His word is also going to come down. When his word comes down, he says, I'm giving you my thoughts. When his word comes down, he says, I'm giving you my ways. Yes. So when you've got my word, you've got my thoughts. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. I need you to pay attention. When you've got my word, you've got my ways. I don't want you to miss this here. My God. This, listen, this thing is real. Okay? This thing is real. My God. It, it, <laughs> it's realer than gas prices. It, it's, it's realer than the price of bread going up. It, it, it's re I'm telling somebody right now. Your Bible just told you if you can, if you can be a receiver of this word. You will begin to receive his thoughts. You will begin to receive his ways. Now watch this. Now watch this. I don't want you to miss this. Cause, cause see, cause see, this is where most Christians stay. See, they stay in a place where they receive this word and they feel good about it, but they don't receive the prosperity. See, see, God wants to take you into a dimension of his prosperity where it does not end. Yeah. Yeah. There shall be delay no longer. He wants to take you to a place where it doesn't just feel good when you hear it, but when you begin to speak it, it takes you into another dimension where that thing just carries on in your life. Yeah. I need you to pay attention here. See, this is where most Christians stay. They, they get mad at the preacher when he says something that's supposed to happen and it doesn't happen. They get mad at the preacher. But the reality of it is where you and I have to go is we have to go to a place where we're speaking God's word. Okay, and when you speak God's word, you step into another dimension of his glory. Are you guys with me on this? Okay, so when God's word is spoken out of his mouth, it's going to cause growth. It's going to cause uh, provision. It's going to get bread to the eater, seed to the sower. Are you with me there? Yeah. Now watch what it says here. It says in verse 11, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. Oh, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. In verse 10, it says, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not there. 
But waters the earth that makes it bring forth in blood that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. Wait a minute. He said it doesn't return. But then he says it shall not return to me void. So which one is it? Does it return or does it return, doesn't return to him void? So what we, you and I have to understand is we receive his word and it comes from the mouth of God. But it's going to return because you and I are going to declare it. I don't want you to miss this. Isaiah is teaching us something profound here with this text.